welcome to Petersfield in Hampshire for one of the biggest motocross events of the year. In the British Sidecar Grand Prix, the penultimate round in this year's World Championship. 30 of the world's top sidecar crews are here, representing 14 countries. The 1.3 mile circuit will certainly provide a stern test for both the two-man teams and their machines. Machines which have been developed over the years to combine performance with power. The chief thing now is they're all two-strokes. If you go back 10 years, they were all big Nortons and Yamahas. Nowadays, they're all two-strokes. Uh, the technology and the design really takes itself from the solo motocross. So we've got long travel suspension, something like 10 inches on the front, 8 inches on the rear, and 6 or 7 inches on the sidecar wheel to soak up the bumps around here. And there are a lot of those, David. The engine is a 620cc single-cylinder two-stroke, water-cooled, driving through a five-speed gearbox. The whole thing weighs something in the region of 300 pounds, and this is interesting because, as you say, it's a Dutchman's bike, and the Dutch and some of the Germans have their sidecars on the right-hand side, whereas the English and the Swiss have the chair on the left. As you mentioned, the Continentals seem to dominate. It's a long while since the British outfit won this. Do you think there's any chance at all that in the foreseeable future the Brits can once again take the World Championship or win this race, even? Well, it is a pity. I mean, harking back those 10 years, we had people like Nick Thompson at the top of the world. Doug Fox was also up there from down in Kent. Chris Etheridge is our current man in form, I suppose, and he's in with a chance maybe of pulling off a home win today. But for some reason, on the Continental scene, the British men can't match the pace. Reliability is a problem. Investment as well. Sponsorship is crucial to the success of any World Championship effort. And the World Championship standings before this Grand Prix reflect the continental domination. I'm Bear Timmermans and Eric Verhagen of the Netherlands, clear leaders from the Belgians Ramon and Struber. The Sen and Morgan of France are fourth. The top British duo Chris Etheridge and Nick Brace lie 11th in the World Championship and they've just completed their time practice. We come back in and our time was only the 14th quickest and um, we couldn't understand why, you know, everything went well for us, the bike's good, we thought we was quick, um, but uh, it's just the way it goes, I mean, these guys are good and we just have to do, do something a little bit better in the race. So at this distance, have you decided yet what your race tactics are going to be or are you just going to see how it works out? Yeah, I think on the, uh, the start is always uh, a problem, we want to stay out of trouble on the start let the first lap settle down, and then hopefully we'll be in at least the top 10 on the first lap. And it's no panic, you haven't got to be there after three laps, you've got to be at the end uh, after half an hour. So it's just, just slowly, slowly, and one at a time. With me now, I'm Bert Timmermans and Eric Verhagen. Eric, what do you think of the circuit? It's a very nice circuit, it's uh, difficult, it's a long track, and it's uh, very heavy. Uh -huh. So is that going to suit you, or is that difficult for you? It's, uh, it's good for us, I think. Well, this meeting, staged by the Waterlooville Motorcycle Club, has attracted a big crowd. The start of the first leg of the British Grand Prix is just a couple of minutes away. Join us after the break. Welcome back to Petersfield. The first leg of this year's Sidecar Grand Prix is about to start. Let's now join our commentator, Barry Nutley. 60 very fit men in what is acknowledged to be the toughest form of motorcycle sport. From this Manor Farm circuit at Langris, just outside Petersfield in Hampshire. Watch the gate then. The gate drops towards the riders, so they mustn't touch it, otherwise their section won't go down. Everybody just about away, bar one or two, up towards the first left-hand turn. And that's number one, Benny Janssen, reigning world champion, hooked up on the post. But from the word go, the Frenchman, Gilles Maysen, Eric Morgan, out in front. Maysen, number 12, in Leeds. The adverse camber drop, an awful lot of dust. Riders picking their way through, heading out now towards the open country. So it's number 12, Maysen. It looks as though it's the German Netterschneid, number four, in second place. It is indeed Walter Netterschneid and Lothar Jela in second place. But they send the Frenchman, number 12, on the Kawasaki, away down the back of the circuit, very, very fast, flat out in third gear around this point, hooking it up to fourth. The power of the Kawasaki stretching away from Netterschneid. The red colours of what looks to be like Russell, and it's Etheridge, number 26, 
Chris Etheridge in third place. So a good start by the Englishman. Maidstone in Kent is where Etheridge comes from. Etheridge then, Nick Brace in third. Up the back hill, and what a lead already by Maysen and Morgan, the Frenchman number 12. Etheridge pushing hard in third, looking to go through on the inside of Walter Nettichnight. There's Etheridge, number 26, in your picture. Joseph Russman, number 14, in fourth place. Maysen hanging out the back end. Etheridge still being caught now by Brussman, number 14. A long way to go. 30 minutes will be the full race distance. They said, cresting the top of the hill. Then a Schneid, still in second. Then it's Etheridge. Then the number 14 pairing, Josef Brussman and Werner Kirchner. The red crew in your picture, hot on the hills of Etheridge, across the adverse camber climb at the top. Etheridge has the advantage of having his sidecar on the left, whereas the German's passenger is riding at the top of the hill, but my goodness me, he's putting the Englishman under pressure now. Etheridge then having to work really hard to defend that third place from the very determined Germans, but what a start by the Frenchman. Race leader may send all the way from the Toulouse area down there in the south of France. And this going will suit him absolutely to a T, just the way they like it in France. Hard, bone hard and dusty, in fact. Since the two strokes came into sidecar cross, Gilles Maysen has really been a force to be reckoned with on the continent. And it's just about the man to beat in his home country. And my goodness me, what a performance he's put up in the 1991 sidecar cross series, lying fourth in the championship at the moment on 149 points, Maysen. The man in second place in this race, number four, Walter Netterscheid, is in third place in the championship. So a lot of points at stake. 20 points they collect for the win, 17 for second place. Race order then, the top six. They send Netterscheid, we're looking at those, Etheridge and Brustman having an almighty scrap. Then the Belgians, Ramon and Einbert Timmermans, championship leader, is there in sixth place. Timmerman's obviously not wanting to throw anything away. Number 14, Brustman and Werner Kirschner, a man who goes back many, many years sidecar passengering in this sport. 15 years at the top level, Werner Kirschner. And the name that springs to mind, he passengered with Willy Liebel in the early 80s. But Kirschner there doing a sterling job for Brustman in pursuit of Chris Etheridge and Nick Brace. Home crowd very much behind the young Kentishman here. Etheridge probably having clinched the British Championship. The best hope we have in Britain of a man winning the Grand Prix here, but he's now in third place. And the home crowd urging him round the right-hander onto the start-finish area. Ramon, number eight. And their former world champion, Christoph Husser, trailing some way down the order. Now, Husa has had a fairly mediocre season in 1991. No wins to date. In fact, he's sitting in eighth place in the championship. Second place, number four, Walter Nettischneid and Lothar Jela. Two wins under their belt. They won in Germany, a double win in Germany, and winner of the first leg in Switzerland, the number four pairing. Etheridge's best result in Switzerland with a fifth and a third. 13 and 17 points is what he came away from Switzerland with. But this man, race leader, Gilles Maysen, has only had one other win, and that was the second leg. And look at the British flag there going out to urge Etheridge to even greater lengths if at all possible. Eddie Ramon, number eight, and Gino Struva. And there, Christoph Husser piling on the coals as well, winding in the leading bunch. Timmermans number five, Eric Verhagen across the top of the jump on the downhill stretch. And the German now closing on the back of Gilles Maysen. These two getting away from the chasing bunch. It really is a scrap now about first and second. And it's anybody's guess as to which one of these crews is going to lift the glory in this leg one of the 1991 British Sidecar Cross Grand Prix from Langrish. 
both of them sidecars on the continental side that is the, the right hand side of the bike unlike the British and Swiss crews who have the chairs on the left and it certainly would appear that the right hand side cars have a very slight advantage around this Petersfield circuit third place in the world then number four Walter Netterschneid currently sitting on 161 points what a sterling performance by Josef Brustmann, number 14, who hasn't really featured in the world table to date. I mean, Brustmann is really out of the twilight zone. He's not a name we're used to seeing in the top half a dozen at a Grand Prix, but certainly delivering the goods here at Petersfield. Race leader then still, Gilles Maysen. Second place still, number four. Walter Nederschneid. And closing on the downhill drop, and the German is very, very fast down into this left hander at the bottom of the hill. Passengers' legs flailing the air. Difficult to get a compromise on the power and the steering round there. Too much power on the output with crab over to the right hand side. And these men really are nothing short of athletes. They run, they train, they weight lift. And you can imagine, it speaks for itself, doesn't it, just how super fit they have to be to pursue this particular branch of motorcycle sport. And the organizers here at the Waterlooville event have done a superb job in track preparation, the dust being kept to a minimum. And coming off the circuit there now, that's a retirement already. Number 17 pulling out Dirk van Wagemart, the Belgian. As moving up through the field now, series leader Einbert Timmermans and Eric Verhagen, number five, having a very, very steady ride in the top six. Still watching now the battle for first and second, but it looks as though Gilles Maysen has got the measure of the second place man, Netta Schneid. He's now stretched out that gap. And Etheridge is still in third and closing. Now the Union flags are waving here for Chris Etheridge and Nick Brace because they are very, very obviously closing on the second place man. That is the second place man in your picture now. Rounding the turn. Let's wait for Etheridge. There he is. And the crowd know. They sense that they could have a British second place and maybe even a victory here at Petersfield. So Etheridge being urged to the limit by the home supporters. Waiting for Etheridge now out of the turn as Nederschneid crests the hill. And Etheridge is missing because up into third place now has come Brustman. So Chris Etheridge, oh, what a disappointment for the young Kentishman and his passenger from Brackville. They're out of the running here in leg one of the Grand Prix. There it is, mechanical retirement for Etheridge. Well, that immediately elevates Josef Brustman and Werner Kirschner up into third, and they are now under real pressure from Christoph Husser, number 19, and his passenger, Adrian Kaiser, former double world champions, this pairing, from Switzerland. In fact, when Husser won the championship, he had his brother in the chair, but Kaiser is the man for 91. Second place, then, number four, Walter Nederschneid and Lothar Jäger. This is the scrap for third place now, and Brustman, I have to say, must be going through just a little bit of surprise element here, finding himself in third place in very hot company indeed. Christoph Husser really going at it round the outside, and Husser is set to grab that third place. There is the series leader, Heimbert Timmermans, Eric Verhagen, number five, having a very comfortable ride, and they know they need to score points without doing anything reckless or anything silly and throwing caution to the wind. They've just got to ride steadily and get the points. Meanwhile, back at the front, Gilles Maysen, number 12, Eric Morgan, from the southeastern area of France. Walter Nederschneid, Lothar Yale, from Germany, down there in second and closing just a little bit again. And behind them, the battle raging now for third and fourth places. Well, it's... Well, it's looking as though Maysen is romping to this win and it suits him ideally because the circuit here at Langrish is taking him about two and a half minutes to complete each lap and it's just about the best circuit in Hampshire, certainly one of the finest venues in the south of England. Motocross has been held here for something in the region of 25 years, an annual event. This, of course, is the big one. First time the Grand Prix has been staged here 
and a capacity crowd enjoying tremendous weather. What a spectacle of racing. Husa then, looking as though he's forced through up to third. Yes, he has indeed. Brusman is now down. And right behind Brusman is Fusenegger. Number 21, Karl Fusenegger from Austria is now closing on Brusman, who looks to be tiring. This is the race leader still. And still, yeah, Walter Nedeschneid there in second place, number four. It's at this point in the race, I think, that the passengers will begin to feel a bit of fatigue creeping in. There you have the top six. Christoph Husser, Adrian Kaiser now in third. Brusman still in fourth. Fusenegger breathing down his neck. And championship leader, looking as though he might be the 1991 champion. I'm Bear Timmermans, Eric Verhagen in sixth place. That's all they need to do. That'll give them ten points. If they pull in ten points in this one, they are really on with a chance of winning the title in leg two. Number 56, the rider being lapped there, Wolfgang Kuhn, as the riders force on. Now, this is a real problem when they get among the tail enders. All sorts of things can happen. But look, Brusman is now... Husa is out! Christoph Husa, number 19, on the left of your picture, has had a mechanical retirement. So, to say that's a major disappointment, I think, is an understatement. So, Husa has retired from a brilliant third, promoting Brustman yet again to that coveted third-place slot. We're watching the second-place man now, still, Walter Nedeschneid, who mounted a challenge in the early stages to Gilles Maysen, the green outfit in your picture, in fact, just leaving your picture, but that challenge has faded. The man behind the number four outfit is a tail ender, so Walter Nedeschneid has no real problems from the rear. Nobody's going to attack him. It looks a fairly comfortable second place. What a spectacular piece of Hampshire countryside this is, and presumably after the event it'll be restored to its original condition as farmland. Look at the ruts and the banking thrown up, really, by pure acceleration as the sidecar wheel lifted there. That just illustrates how tired the sidecar passengers are getting. That man was just a little bit light coming around there and nearly got his driver in all sorts of trouble. No trouble, though, for the second-place crew, Walter Nederschneid, Lothar Yehler. There's a tail-ender. Right in the thick of the action, but the competitors now getting fairly strung out. Gilles Maysen, Eric Morgan. Brussman, the third-place man, cresting the hill. Single-cylinder, two-stroke power, five-speed gearbox, water-cooled, an awful lot of horsepower, and very, very tough machinery indeed. And Klaus Weinmann having a good run as well. I saw Husser circulating again there, so Christoph Husser, number 19, who retired with a mechanical problem, is running again because he's in your picture now, just ahead of Timmermans. So whatever the problem was with Husser, he's got the bike fired up and he's away again. He was definitely coasting at the side of the track. Whether, in fact, that was a bit of passenger fatigue, we don't know. But Husser's definitely got going again. And he's got everything to go for because he's on for points still. He's well in a point-scoring position and not about to give that up for anybody, I can assure you. In fact, I'll try and calculate approximately where Husa is, but it looks as though Husa might be in sixth or seventh place at this moment in time. But that, Gilles Mesa and Eric Morgan, number 12 on the Kawasaki race leader. And a lot of tail enders ahead of them, so just a little bit of traffic to negotiate now. Hopefully they can keep out of trouble. Well, they've ridden this one very, very steadily. Almost a start-to-finish win for them, but the win not yet in sight. But the clock's saying that next time around they should get the last lap flag, so we'll wait and see if that's confirmed. But he's fighting his way through the tail-enders now. Well, there it is. One lap to do, then, of the Langrish circuit for Gilles Maysen and Eric Morgan. What appears to be an unassailable lead. This man in third place, Josef Grossman and Werner Kirschner, is having the fight of his life to keep Karl Fusenegger number 21 behind him. Gilles Maysen then on his way now to what looks like the win in leg one here and 20 world championship points. And I remind you that coming into this event, Maysen was on 149. If he pulls this one off, he will immediately go to 169. That won't, however, lift him ahead of Netterschneid in the championship because Netterschneid is running in second place very, very strongly indeed. And he's in your picture. Walter Nederschneid and Lothar Yale from Germany, runners-up and looking good.
but down over the drop for the last time for Gilles Maysen. The tail ender ahead of him, number 54, that's the Hollister brothers from Reading in Berkshire. And what a good performance they've put up in this, their first Grand Prix. But I think the hearts of the crowd go out to the performance by this very, very tough, gritty French pair from the Toulouse area of France. And this, the battle for third, it's not over yet. There's plenty going on further down the field. And I've never seen Carl Fusenegger more determined. He's just throwing everything at the Bruceman Kirschner pairing ahead of him. Second place then, Netta Schneid, number four. And we are watching the tail ender being lapped again. In fact, mounting a bit of a challenge, one lap adrift, however, to the race leader, Gilles Maysen. That's still the Hollister brothers there, number 54, Trevor and Kevin Hollister. A lap adrift, but coming in with a moment of glory in the wheel tracks of first leg leader and what looks like first leg winner, Gilles Maysen, Eric Morgan. Cresting the big hill for the last time. The Suzuki climb here at Langrish down towards the next very tight right-hander, down through the gearbox here. Second gear, this one, pulling hard. Around the corner again, Hollister still one lap adrift, but he hasn't been lapped by Netta Schneider and Yela. Race leaders then, Gilles Maysen, Eric Morgan, under the bridge for the last time. The chequered flag is in sight. They know they've got this one. Nothing can go wrong now. Fists in the air. A great win. It looks as though Brusman lost that vital third place to Fusenegger. Timmermans grabbed points. He had a good steady ride. And look at Husa. He got going. Whatever his problem was, he got points as well. A well-deserved drink for Eric Morgan after a tough race in sweltering conditions. And for his partner and driver, Gilles Messene, the number of jumps on the challenging course had certainly made an impression. Congratulations. Thank you. A good race for you? Yeah, uh, good race. Uh, uh, problem, uh, jump. Uh, one race is no problem for, for you. Confirmation of that result, Messene and Morgan holding off Netta Schneid and Jela. The Austrians, Fussenegger and Moisberger third, but disappointment for home supporters, Chris Etheridge couldn't finish. The exhaust springs broke, and the, which enabled the exhaust to fall off the front, so then you're down on power and it's not unable to carry on. Was there nothing you could do about it? I mean, that was obviously the end of your race then? Yeah, that was it. You can't carry on because it's too noisy and you get thrown out for uh, too noise. So the first leg of the British Sidecar Grand Prix goes to the French team of Gilles Massain and Eric Morgan. From Petersfield, bye for now.